Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Tracy and this is Pasquale. Hey! <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the four elements, which is related to astrology. And luckily, we have an astrologist in the house. Yay! <laughs> Can't wait till they show up. Um, so the elements are amazing. Um, they are a little tidbit in the astrology chart. When you start to pull the chart and actually look at the chart, it'll break down um, what your energy looks like mm -hmm. in the four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. And oftentimes that allows us or helps us understand different parts of our makeup, mm -hmm. what creates us. Um, what I recommend is, is for anyone who is interested in learning about the elements to go ahead and go to any um, like astrology site like astrology.com, put your information in and pull a chart up um, and just do a needle chart for the day. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you go down to the bottom, it typically will break down um, the four elements for you. And the reason from a psychological pers um, perspective, the reason this is so important, not just from um, the spiritual um, astrological perspective, but it's kind of like if you've ever heard that analogy of like how we peel the onion back and then mm -hmm. how there's such different parts of us. And so this is a perfect example of that, like having these four elements being so different. And we're going to go through, Pascal's going to go through each element and break it down and explain uh, what it is and how it affects us and things. But um, it's it can really help us be balanced and understand all the si different sides to us. Yes, and, and actually, like a lot of times I use it in the personal practice and just determining if someone has, like, if you have an anxiety, if you have depression, or what creates that anxiety, or what creates that depression. What creates the instability. Correct. That makes us more susceptible to the symptoms. Correct. And so one of the things that we find with the elements in astrology is, is that in most cases, everyone is always missing an element or missing a piece to it. And, and, and so that is kind of the key to kind of unraveling kind of this element thing, mm -hmm. right? But before we go into those great details, let's just talk about the elements as a whole, right? So the first element is fire, right? Fire, it burns, right? I how you say fire. <laughs> fire. Fire. And it burns. It's hot, right? It has a lot of energy to it. Yeah. And a lot of times with fire is it's passion, it's drive, it's desire, right? I think it would also be like impulsivity. Like when I think of a person who's high in fire, I think of somebody who's just like, almost like can be aggressive at times too. Angry, very, also very passionate, just very intense. Yeah, right? intense is a good word yeah. um, for fire. And so typically fire people, like they're they're always like on the go. They're they love to sweat. They love to kind of be active and keep moving, right? Yeah. Um, the second element I always like to go to is air, and air is like if you think of it, it's the breath, right? It's mm -hmm. the thing that gives us life. It's the thing that connects us to life. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that combines everything, right? It's the thing that joins us with nature, with the earth, and so air people are people who are typically super um social they like to be around people um the more like the air, social butterfly like the right? social butterfly flapping Fly their wings high. with air right <laughs> and and but they're like they're people who are typically very much um they're comfortable being in places with people right they can be on stage comfortably they're comfortable talking to anybody and what you find is the more air that's in someone typically there's someone that people always talk to them and they're always like, people, people are, are drawn sharing them. you everything about them. Mm -hmm. And it's the air, because you're bringing them breath of life, right? Like that desire. I think of, would it also be like kind of like how you would think of an airhead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but not in a bad way, right? Like that would be the common saying. Yeah. And maybe that's even where that comes from. Who knows? But, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I think of like, like flighty people, like yes. a lot of creativity, a lot of ideas, you know, just very um, uh, productive, but can also be flighty in the sense of maybe starting a lot of things and not finishing them. Yes, air people are very much people who, they don't really have structure, right? If you think about air, kind of like air kite. flows. You're like a kite. Exactly. Kind of all over the place. You just move. <laughs> and so people with air, yeah, they're like, boop, 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 boop. 
and they're like with everyone. Um, not to give it away, like but a little hummingbird. Exa exactly. <laughs> Only not yeah, but louder, and more involved in everything. That's an air person. They're just uh -huh. everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like they have no real control, right? They're just like everywhere. They're going with the flow type of people. Maybe people who embrace change and are very yes. flexible. Maybe those might be the type of people that. Um, others could perceive as them not taking life or things that seriously because they're just like, okay, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> Which goes back to Airhead, right? All right, really? It's, it, it's a and lot I, of fun. And I want to say, like, I'm, I, I, it's the perception, not that that's the intention behind totally. these traits. <laughs> and we're going to share ours next yes. week. Yes. And trust me, you'll. You'll connect, you'll understand. <laughs> so the third element is earth, right? And so earth is very stable, grounded. People who love to cook, people who love to garden, people who um, just have stability with them, right? So like with the air sign, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like earth signs are very like, and if you come into this closet, this closet is very organized. Mm -hmm. And there's labels on everything, and that's just kind of the way it is, oh, yeah. right? They're so organized. Like, everything has a place. Mm -hmm. Everything goes somewhere, right? Um, Would they be good problem solvers, like the fix-it people? Like the... Ish. Calm, under pressure type? They're definitely always calm. They're great at making money. Making money, making a home, thinking Long -term about... Long-term goals and exactly. not the immediate gratification type thing where they can... Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So they're very like... The way I always look at it is like it's a tree, right? The tree's always stable and it stays. Mm -hmm. Wind might blow and things might move, but they're just going to stand their ground, right? Mm -hmm. They're very grounded. And I know last week we talked about... Or two weeks... Two seconds two ago, we talked about grounding and kind of the benefits of it. Right. Earth people are very grounded. Yeah. Like it's just in their nature. Mm -hmm. So these would be like the people like you would maybe go to for like um, when you would just really need somebody like the more dependable is what I'm trying to say. Dependable, reliable, responsible. Yeah. They're always the people that will like be with you and kind of help you. Like you the know they're going to be there for yes. you if you need them. Yeah. But then on the, the downside of that, I would imagine they're also the people who are scared to take risks and stay in their comfort zone. They're not flexible. Right. So, and so if plans change, they could kind of like break down a little bit or get anxious or stressed. Yeah, earthquakes. Oh, like they'll there you go. just like they'll shake cuz it's yeah. it's not what I planned. This is not what I want. Right. You know, or my favorite is is and I, I've done this to people in the past to earth people, so I'm sorry if you're watching this. <laughs> you know who you are. They would have like a shelf with everything so perfect that it's like a perfect triangle. Mm -hmm. And you come in, you're like, <laughs> and then there's this other element that comes in and is like, and this is going to go here. And I flip it all around. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, we're talking and they're like, someone moved my shelf. That's an earth person going, you just ruined my stability. Right. Because it's out of place. The person who has like the perfect desk where everything's yes. like. Or, <laughs> hey, we're going to plan a party and let's open an Excel spreadsheet and let's really list it all out. Right. Yeah. Got Versus it. an air person would be like, yeah, we're just going to invite people and it's, it'll be someone will bring something and <laughs> there's going to be stuff there. We bring whatever we, just bring whatever you feel. Yeah. yeah. And a fire person's like, I don't care as long as you can see me. I want to be seen. <laughs> fire everywhere. Right. <laughs> And then we go to the final element, which is water. Water. Water element people are very, um, they're fluid, right? They can flow. Mm -hmm. So like air, they're flexible. Mm -hmm. The difference is water people are very internal. Um, they're very emotional. They kind of hold that emotion. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times with a water person, you know, they're the people that if you, you know, disagree, they might start crying, right? Um, or the person who um, just can feel, like, yeah. ex like just they just feel things, you know? Um, empaths typically have a lot of water in them because that flow, right, if you think about it, the emotion they're picking up is just that flow that's hitting them that they're But reading. there's constant flow, yes. right? So the emotions can be very unstable 
at where times, you yes. could be because you're feeling a lot, maybe feel, and that's interesting because a lot of times when when people um, avoid their emotions for a long time and then through therapy and things, they start to open up and feel for the first time, or even like a recovering addict or something like that who was numbing themselves from emotions yeah. for a very long time, and then they start to feel. I always refer to it, I'm like, as a tidal wave. You know, it's like you just got hit by a tidal wave and you've got to, you know, you've got to under, you've got to like let, you've got to get used to what emotions feel like. So it, it feels like a little less and less each time. Yes. But so that they become I used to the flow. That. Yeah. Right. To, to the way it works. And, and, and the great thing again is like, is that when you start to look at the elements, we all have all four elements, even if we're missing an element or we're weaker in an element. All it is, is is it's like anything that like is is natural, right? It tries to create the balance, mm -hmm. right? And so you 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 use the elements to help you create the balance. Mm -hmm. And so when you find that there's something missing, it's sometimes we look for the solution and how do we bring that missing element in to so that your body doesn't balance. have to make the balance. So it's like we're capable internally of balancing and having elements of each element yes <laughs> but it's but naturally speaking usually we're missing at least one or parts of it right okay. like yeah. it, it's all based it again goes to number right mm -hmm. and so like a perfectly balanced is is that it'd be the same amount of planets in each of the elements it's mm -hmm. not real right most people have an element that's weaker right, right? Um, and sometimes the weaker one is actually the strongest, just depending on how the chart looks. But it's a little more complicated that way. But yeah. it's, it's ultimately, it's about creating the balance, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what I will tell you is, is that when it comes to the elements, a lot of times, like people who are missing fire, for example, they're the people who probably need to go to the gym, right? Like for them, the gym is kind of their happy place, mm -hmm. right? Because they're building that endorphin. They're building that fire. The fire is burning, burning, burning. They're sweating. It wouldn't then enable it, though, to be even stronger? Not if, it, if it's it. weaker, right? You're uh -huh. drawn to what you need. Okay. And so you'll be drawn oh, to kind of doing it. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And so like someone with less air, right? Yeah. They're typically going to be drawn to something that creates them to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. um, they may be out of their element, but they're always going to be drawn to it, right? Someone who's weaker oh, in earth, yeah. they're going to want to be hiking or walking, right? Mm -hmm. And they're always going to be drawn to it, right? Yeah. The, the one that is the most common that I've always seen is, is people like who are, who are weaker or less in water. They're always the ones who want to be at the beach every time. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I need water. That's totally why I'm there. Yeah, they're drawn there and that's like their happy place. And they just can let go there because their body now says, oh, there's water here. And now I'm going to create the balance. Yeah. That's interesting too, because we, in therapy, we do, especially in EMDR and with the hypnotherapy, we create a happy place, right? And it's interesting to see people's different happy places. And now I never connected this before, but it is interesting. I bet like maybe the air or the, well, you can help me place this, but obviously the, the missing, if it's low in water, would be the beach or something like that. Needing and water. I'm always thirsty. I'm thinking the air people are probably the ones that are in a fantasy land with like unicorns and rainbows and fairies. <laughs> yeah. Like, or, or yeah, that, or they like to Which be in heights. Like people okay. who are missing air are like, I want to be up high. Okay. So like mountain. Mountains. Okay. Like anywhere where it's breath, right? Mm -hmm. Connecting two things and then maybe earth if you're low in earth those are the people that maybe want to be gardening in like or or like in a desert area or yeah. um maybe the mountains somewhere but sometimes they have like horses or like some sort of animal yes like that that comes in people who are them. missing earth element are typically people who love animals mm -hmm. oh. big time um, because they're that representative of the balance. earth, so they find that peace and comfort in the so animal, sense. which now mm -hmm. creates balance in the rest of their in their elements. So for somebody, I think we covered all of them except for fire. So for somebody with fire, it's gym. would they? I it's, no for a happy place. Uh, no, it would be the gym. Someone who's lacking fire would is someone who likes to get their heart to beat. Wouldn't it be like I would think heat somewhere with like. Or like in the winter where there was like fire or like camping. They'll be drawn to actual the fire. physical fire, hundred okay. percent. But it all depends, right? Like like 
yes, in the standard, I'm just missing fire. I'm going to be drawn to the element of fire. Mm -hmm. So that could be an actual fire. I if, like, it could be the sun. The people who are like obsessed with fire. That's a study that some psychologist should take on. <laughs> It's always possible. <laughs> you heard it here first. Trace is taking on a new project. Um, but no, it's possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like you're going to be drawn to what you don't have. Right. Right. Fire is, I've always equated fire with your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Right. People who lack fire are typically adrenal, adrenaline junkies. Oh, I like to okay. run. I like to work out. CrossFit is my life. And like they're like, and their heart always has to beat. Right. Yeah. And that beating is that fire. It's that drive. That makes passion. a lot of sense. Okay. But yes, you could uh, around a fire totally mm -hmm. laying in the desert, 120 Campfire, degree so, yeah. sun mm -hmm. totally will recharge them. Right. But a lot of times it's all based on kind of the other elements too. Right. Mm -hmm. If they have a lot of earth and like fires, they're weak. Mm -hmm. A, an actual fire may not be good for them because it'll burn their stability. It'd be really interesting too for it, um, for you guys to look up your elements and then comment on what your element is and then what your happy place is. Love and that. See the connection. Yeah, that would be that would be That's amazing. Really interesting. I love that. Um, and and we'll do ours. We'll mm -hmm. we'll comment yeah. ours um, and then. Next week, we're going to be actually going a little deeper and talking through kind of what the missing element is and how you can kind of create the balance. And we kind of alluded to some of that here, um, but we're definitely going to go a little deeper. Yeah, we'll talk about, and we'll use ours as an example because we both have missing pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> we do. Everyone has a missing element. There's not one person who is perfect. See if you can guess. Try, that's another, you can put in the comments, see if you can guess by our personalities which ones maybe we are and which one we're missing. Oh, that's good. And, and <laughs> that actually, that's funny. actually a lot of fun. No. I, I want that. So we should just go, you could go like people watch as your kind of therapy homework <laughs> and go people watch and try to guess the elements by the, you know what I mean? It's a good time. <laughs> that would be fun. That is. And, and I do want to kind of like step back for a second because it, it just brought to my attention, mm -hmm. like, or I was just told, like, we need to remember that when we talk about the elements, all of our sun sign, moon signs, rising signs, all the planets, right, are based in elements. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about missing element or the elements as a whole, we're not talking about our sun sign, right? Like, it, it's like someone who is a sun sign, like is Leo, let's say, and their sun sign is fire or their fire, right? Leo is fire. They actually could be weak in fire and strong in water. Or weak in water, like it, it, yeah. it, it's their sun. Their sun. Their sun sign does not equal where their strength or weakness is. It's a very different thing in the chart. Oh, and that adds another. I'm glad you said strengths and weaknesses because that also alludes to where our strengths and weaknesses are in life yes. and our tendencies. And so, what we need to, you know, honor as our strengths, acknowledge, right? Because many people don't do that, but we're quick to honor and acknowledge our weaknesses, but then also acknowledging our weaknesses in a sense of, okay, this is what I need to work on to improve and yes. balance, balance it out. Yeah. And so next week we'll be telling stories. Yes. Because I love to we'll create stories little, with charts. We'll, we'll be getting a little personal. It'll be a good time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We'll for see joining you next us. week. Bye.